Right now, I'm in my car watching YouTube on Android Auto, and I'm going to show you how to do it yourself. It's really easy and it's free. Today, I'm going to show you a really cool hack that lets you use your Android phone, Android Auto, and take advantage of your beautiful touchscreen in your car if you have one for Android Auto. The use case for me is I have to spend a lot of time waiting for my charger to top up my car battery. So I'm sitting here in a car lot waiting for my charger, but you could also be waiting for your kids at their soccer game. You could be waiting for your spouse at the grocery store and you wanna just watch movies. You wanna surf the web or something on a bigger screen than on your phone. So there's something called Android Auto Apps Downloader. This is a really cool app that allows you to, without a PC, Without root on your phone, you just install this app. It's not on the Play Store though, so you'll have to go to the URL that we're gonna show you right here to go there and get it, or you just Google it, and it will install it, and then it also will let you install third-party apps into Android Auto. So you can do things like watch YouTube, Netflix, even browse the web, and even play your own movies and videos off your phone directly on your touch screen. So there is a few little caveats, but they're easily worked around. Like I said, you don't need a PC, you can just write on your phone directly. You don't have to enable developer options, and you don't need to go grab the APK or anything else from somewhere else. It's all available on their website, which is actually on GitHub. So it's an open source product. So, uh, you know, it's it should be safer than some random site in who knows what country. No root is needed, like I said, but it does seem to matter which version of Android you have and even which version of Android Auto that you have. But fortunately, all of the details for all of those little caveats are on the website and there's a workaround for most of them. Usually it just involves rolling back your Android Auto version and getting an older version of it so that it's compatible and everything will just work. So we're gonna go to downloads and we're going to download the latest version. And this is version 1.4 as, as we're recording this. And I'm gonna just basically install this. And I'm going to install and open it. Now, in this case, I actually have to install unknown apps in Chrome. I'm using Chrome for this, so I'm gonna allow it for this particular source. Now it's giving me the pop-up to install the app. So I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna open it. And basically, this is the interesting part. You now have, oh, I have to install unknown apps within itself because it's gonna be, the app itself is gonna be installing apps within Android Auto. So I'm gonna allow from this source as well. The interesting thing is the way this app works, it's free for one download and you have a selection of different apps that you can use to do different things depending on what your needs are. You can either mirror your Android phone experience onto the display or there's other things like CarStream and Fermata Auto, which is what I'm going to get today, which actually gives you a bunch of different options for media playback, YouTube, and even web browsing. So you can access all those features on your touch screen while you're tethered with Android Auto. I haven't tried this on wireless Android Auto. I've only tried it on wired Android Auto because that's all my car supports. I have a Kia Soul EV. And so we're gonna try Fermata Auto. So I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna allow it access to my media on the device. You get one download for free. And then you get one download every month after that. Or if you go for the pro option, it's $3.50 or 3.5 euros to actually unlock all the pro features and allows you to download any of these apps if you want to try them. So it's also good to give the, uh, the author a little donation for that as well. So it's a pretty good value for that. So I'm going to click on Fermata Auto and then it's going to ask me to install this. It also has a control app that lets you use your phone as a controller for what's on your screen too, which is really kind of cool. So now it's loading, it's installing. I'm going to ask if it wants to install this, give it permissions, app is installed. And then it's gonna install the main app. Doing that as well. And I'm gonna hit open. I'm gonna give it access to all of my photos and media on my device. And then here, I'm gonna be able to go in and then go and access my downloads and bring in some, uh, some video and we'll see what we can do. But as you can see along the bottom here, you've got a bunch of different icons. You've got your folders, your favorites, you've got your music, you got YouTube, which then allows you to access anything. And then another tab, there's a web browser and it brings up Google, which is pretty cool. And this will all be shown on my uh, Android Auto display, probably after I reconnect. 
So we've got the phone plugged into my Android Auto, uh, it's Google Maps, we're at the charging station. Now I can just basically go to the home screen and I've got Fermata Control and Fermata Auto. And then Fermata Auto will give me some different options. So I'm gonna go into videos, play this, this is Fermata Control, which is a little confusing. So here's, here's a little meta me talking about a, a really cool open source watch. Um, the only downside to this, at least in my car, and this is apparently just a, a Kia Hyundai thing, is I only have part of my screen. I have a much larger screen that I can't take full advantage of, and this will vary depending on your vehicle. Um, but the nice thing is, is that at least I have this for now, and I can still see my battery charging and all that kind of stuff while I'm at my charger. But if you have another vehicle, you probably have full screen. You also have the ability within the Android Auto app itself on your phone to adjust the screen resolution depending on the vehicle that you have in the head unit. But let's just go back to this Fermata control. So it's a little confusing, but there's this little chevron here. You press this. I've chosen to have my, my menu on the side. So you have access to favorites, your playlists for music. And then here's YouTube. And you can just literally just type in stuff. Like if you want to see, you want to watch The Mandalorian. I don't know if we can show that, but I'll show you an ad. Um, and then you also have your web browser here. So we can go Ooh. Pretty cool. My only issue is I wish I could turn off some of this sub-menu stuff that's always persistent with Android Auto, but you know, it's it's all there. You also have the ability to change your scaling so you can have it fit your full screen. And this is videos, uh, YouTube, or um, even your web browser like I'm showing here. So this is original size. You can navigate back and forth. You can do all the things that you would normally do on your phone. You can even request the desktop site version of this particular page as well, which is pretty cool. And go back here, back to videos. What I also really like is when you unplug your phone, say you're at your destination and you're ready to leave, the next time you plug it back in, it'll pick up right where you left off. So a little bit of a warning, this does work while you're driving. There's nothing stopping you from watching a video while you're driving with this particular hack or add-on, if you will. So don't do that. It's illegal in most places, and you will get pulled over if, if a cop sees you driving with a video playing. So I was using a Pixel 5 running Android 12 beta. Uh, it didn't actually work for that. Um, it went through all the motions, it installed everything just fine, but it didn't actually pop up on my display. And that's kind of a, an expected outcome on that particular case, because Android 12 was just released recently and they haven't updated the app to work with that. So uh, we switched to another phone, my Huawei P30 Pro, and it works just fine. The nice thing is this hack actually works on even older phones. It goes back as far as Android 6 and 7. So you have lots of options to have, at least having a cheap, inexpensive media player in your car um, that works with your nice touch screen if you have one. If you like these kinds of videos, let us know in the comments down below and let us know what kinds of things you'd like us to focus on more next time and we will try to do our best to do that for you. Um, and also make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon as well. So if you want to see some other videos, feel free to click on some of these right here. I might be in them, somebody else might be in them. <laughs>